Okay, so today uh, we're going to be setting up our project, uh, talking about what our new inspiration is going to be compared to what the old version was. And we're going to be creating our first room and making it so that the room itself is able to display pixel art scaled correctly to um, modern display size. So let's uh, jump right in. Okay, uh, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, I know it's been wow, almost a year since the last time I updated this project. So what I decided to do since it's been so very long since I did anything with this was to start again from scratch and this time use a different game as my inspiration. So previously I was working using Candy Crush and um, uh, Candy Crush and Bejeweled as my main inspiration. What I thought would be better, rather than trying to make something that looks like a mobile game, was to make something that looks like a, a PC game or something that you could play in your browser. So my focus this time is going to be to create a, an executable um, that can be used either on Mac or PC, depending on which platform you're using. Also, that aligns with the least expensive version of Game Maker Studio 2. I know that Game Maker Studio recently changed their policies as far as what the free version is willing to do for Game Maker Studio 2. So apologies for anybody who started this tutorial and is dissatisfied with that. My suggestion is that you reach out to YoYo Games and tell them how you feel about it. Um, so yeah, our goal here is going to be to make something that can be run on either uh, Windows or Mac. Now as the inspiration for this game, I want to take Puzzle Quest. So Puzzle Quest, if you didn't know, Puzzle Quest, if you didn't know, is a uh, match three game that came out first, I believe, on uh, DS and PSP. It's since been made into a phone game with a bunch of different skins over it. I think the most popular of them being the, the Marvel one. But what I mainly want to do is I want to focus on making something that is, let me just open this image in a new tab. No, I don't want the link. don't want the link. Um, just the image. There we go. What I mainly want to do is focus on making something similar to this, where you have uh, four different kinds of essentially mana. There are direct damage pieces, and then there are money pieces. Now, as to which of these are which, you know, we can totally go for, for any of that. Um, you have different spells that you can use that use different amounts of your mana. You can use that to attack your, your enemy. The main layout is going to be in this kind of 16 by 9 layout. Uh, I don't know if we're going to... No, I'm sure I can find some free art for these. Uh, for now, we're going to be using some art that I made, and I'll include a link to it in the description down below from opengameart.org. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get stuff set up here today. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new project in GML, and I'm going to call this one um, Puzzle Quest knockoff. Might as well be honest with ourselves about what we're doing here. Okay, now as far as the conventions in Game Maker Studio go, let's kind of go over these. When you create a new file, so if you create a new sprite, so if you right click, create sprite, Game Maker doesn't follow their own conventions, which I think is kind of weird. They name this sprite zero, all one word, which makes you think that you should name your stuff like this too. But the main convention used in Game Maker is for sprites, it should be SBR underscore and then whatever the name is. So I'm going to create uh, a few different sprites here. So the first one I'm going to create, uh, we'll call this SBR underscore red gem. And I'm going to load from this a the actual red gem image from Open Game Art. So I've got my sprite right here. I'm going to go to import. Uh, to my downloads, and then I'm going to grab the red gem, and I'm going to open that. Uh, yes, and now, right now, it's a strip, so I'm going to make some changes here. So I want to go to Edit Image, and then in here, I want to go to Image, and I want to convert two frames. Uh, there are six frames, and there's six frames per row and the frame width is 16, and the frame height is 16. So I'm gonna choose convert, yes, and there we go. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, in Game Maker Studio here, you can just hit play, and you can see 
how that's going to play. Now we're not going to want it to do this all the time, but uh, we'll talk about how we can get it so that it's not consistently glistening like that. The ping pong looks kind of cool. Uh, all right, so there's our red gem. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the other gems here. So uh, sprite, right click, create sprite. Uh, let's see, what's the next kind of gem? I think it's the orange one. So let's do SBR underscore orange gem. I'm gonna import from my downloads. And uh, from here, I'm gonna go to edit image, image, uh, convert to frames, 66, 16, 16. So the settings are still there from the last time. I'll click convert, yes. You can hit play to see what it's gonna look like. And there we go. I'm going to repeat this four more times, so I'm going to speed through this. Okay, so here we go. We've got our six different gems created. Now, if you, um, in Game Maker Studio 2, if you mouse over this kind of work area, you can use your middle mouse button to drag it around, and then if you hit control, and then your mouse wheel, you can use that to zoom in and zoom out. So if you lose track of anything, you can just kind of zoom out and see it like that. But I don't need any of these, so I'm just going to close them really quickly. I'm sure there's probably a shortcut to close them all. I don't know it off the top of my head, and I'm too lazy to look, so I'm just going to close them all like this. All right, now, one of the things about Game Maker Studio 2 is that uh, it can be really easy to get a project up and going right away. However, once you start making a project of any size, uh, keeping that project nice and neat is very difficult. So what I'm going to do here is try to make sure that I'm putting in that uh, disciplined keeping things neat right from the beginning. So rather than having these sprites here all on their own, I'm going to go to my sprites, right click, and I'm going to create a group. So I'm going to choose add group, and I'm going to call this my uh, gems. Now, from everything I read, there's not a uh, a specific scheme in which you're supposed to name groups. So maybe it's better to name it uppercase G gems. Let's do that. So now that's nice and organized. So if we want to have um, sprites for like enemies or players, we can have each of them have their own group, and then it's not too bad. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Rooms. In Game Maker Studio 2, whenever you create a new project, it automatically comes with a room called Room Zero. Now again, this is YoYo -Yo Games breaking their own conventions. So we're gonna rename this, we're gonna right click, and I'm going to choose Rename, and I'm gonna call this RM underscore test. This is gonna be the room that we're gonna to use to test things. Now if you right click on this, it'll take you to the blank room, and it'll also bring up this sidebar here. Now, because I want to be working in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I want to make sure that things are laid out in a manner that if I have those 16 by 16 gems, that they're not going to get lost on here. So, for example, if I leave my room, go back to my workspace, this tab right here, and I'm just going to create an object here that I'm going to call obj underscore test. And the convention with Game Maker Studio is that you name objects obj underscore. In here, I'm just going to give this one of the one of the gem sprites. I'll give it the red one. The reason I'm doing this is so I can add this to the room. Look at how tiny that is. If I save this and hit play, that 16 by 16 pixel gem looks minuscule compared to what's going on in this room. So I want to make sure that my room is still in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but in an aspect ratio that you're not going to lose those gems. So um, what I'm going to do is, again, taking inspiration from Puzzle Quest. So looking at Puzzle Quest, they have an 8 by 8 board. So I want to make sure that my height is enough to get the 8 rows in. And then, say, two more on each side. So 12 total rows. And 12 times 16 is 192. So we're going to make our height 192. 
Now this makes our room have this ridiculous aspect ratio. So what I want to do is I want to find out what my height should be in order to keep this how it is. So I'm actually just going to do a regular old math proportion here. So 16 over 9 is equal to, I'm going to call it W over 192. And this might give me a fractional answer. If it does, that's fine. I'll round it to the nearest whole number so that I'm not trying to do a fraction of a pixel. So let's do this really quickly here. Okay, so our width should be 341 pixels. So we're going to make our width 341. And there we go. So now, if I take this same gem and put it in my room and save and hit play, it's no longer going to look quite so ridiculous, but our screen certainly does. So to fix this, I'm going to go to my viewports and cameras. I'm going to enable viewports, create a new viewport, and this is going to have a width of 1024 and a height of 768 um, for my viewport. I'm not going to worry about the camera properties right now. I'm going to save that, hit play, and let's see where where we're at, how things look. Ooh. Oh, got to make the viewport visible. Wait a minute. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's what I missed. <laughs> there we go. That's better. 1024 by 768. No. Okay, so here's what I missed. Uh, we need to make sure that the camera properties are the same as the room. So we want the camera's width to be 341, and you'll see that white box resize by 192. And then you'll see it. So it now fits our screen. And we want our viewport properties to be in line with the aspect ratio. So right now the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So we want this to be a 16 by 9 ratio as well, which it's not currently. So we're going to go pretty big here. Uh, we're going to go, let's say, 1920 by 1080. So 1080p. And we'll save that. And let's hit play. And our gem is going to look a lot better. Uh, and it's resized pretty perfectly. It's a tiny bit off in one direction as far as the pixels go, but it's nothing that the human eye would be able to recognize. So there we go. Uh, we've got a room set up, we've got our sprite set up, and we've got the basics of talking about what the conventions in Game Maker Studio are. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Um, tons of really cool people there who are willing to help out. So yeah. Have yourselves a wonderful day.